So on this slide we talk about ideal sheaf, we also talk about correspondence. So the first thing is the correspondence from M to M till D is functorial and exact and commutes with direct sums and tensor products. So this correspondence between the module M and its localized version is functorial. So everything here will essentially follow from the properties of the tensor product. So it is basically commutative algebra and uh, the best explanation of tensor products is given in Dummett and Foot. And so if you do not know about tensor products or you are feeling rusty about it, just open Dummett and Foot. It has beautiful examples and a very good explanation of it. So the correspondence from M to M till D is functorial and exact and commutes with direct sums and tensor products. So again this localization, this M till D comes just from tensoring. So take M as a R module, then M till D is nothing but M tensored with RF, yeah, where RF is nothing but R localized at say some element f of the ring r. So you have a map phi from m to n yeah so this is the homomorphism of r modules say m is a r module n is a r module and then we have a map from mf to nf or m tilde to n tilde yeah so this is yeah so mf to nf so this left hand side is mf right hand side is nf and rf is nothing but ring r localized at f so this we have talked about in the previous slide also so functoriality means that there is a map from M to N means that there is a corresponding map from MF to NF. So we are just going to write two categories. Yeah, so M to N means there is a corresponding map from MF to NF. So that is what functoriality means. Map in one category, there is a reflection in the other category. Second is exactness this again this entire we have a short exact sequence so we have this short exact sequence 0 to m prime to m to m double prime to 0 so if and only if the sequence below is also exact Yeah, so this is nothing but uh, the fact that localization is a exact functor. So again, commutative algebra, localization is exact functor. First you do just tensor product and then you say it is right exact and then you do localization, invoke some part of localization and uh, you get the second sequence. Again, this is just commutative algebra. And third is again uh, the tensor product you know will split over direct sum and uh, similarly with the uh, second part yeah so again uh, you know when you are saying m direct sum m prime then localize f that means tensor it with rf similarly here localize f means tensor it with rf and uh, then you bring rf to both the modules m and m prime. Now we come back to the ideal sheaf again. So we want to talk about exact sequence associated to a closed subset.
yeah so for property number three you see it follows from the propos the proposition follows from the properties of tensor product yeah you tensor with rf basically when you say localize it f you basically tensor it with rf so now we want to talk about exact sequence associated to a closed subset v of say some variety v yeah so v is a set cut out by a polynomial i is the ideal associated with w in v and this uh, a is nothing but the say ring o of v yeah so let me make this clear this i is the ideal associated with w and a is this yeah you so a is uh, yeah the reason why i'm writing a will be clear in a minute so now you tensor it with rf yeah or localize it so you put tildes on top of it just like property number two now this tildes is nothing but the ideal sheaf yeah and this is nothing but the ideal sheaf so you can check it on each of the open sets because you are getting the functions in the denominator with the denominator as f yeah so what you get is a ideal sheaf this is o of p and this is o of w to 0 so this is important yeah this is precisely what we have done before that is how you define w you basically uh, from o of p you modulo out all the functions which lie in ideal associated with w so you can check it on each of the open set or you can just see via the tensor product so another definition we want to talk about quasi coherent modules so again you fix v comma o of v yeah as a algebraic set or a fine algebraic set so this ov module is quasi coherent if it is isomorphic to some ov module of the form m tilde yeah so basically you want to localize it at some f of o of v yeah now if this module further if this module ov module is finitely generated then we call it as coherent so quasi coherent obviously is more general you're just looking for modules of the kind m till d yeah you can manipulate them on every open set which is defined by a polynomial so you could manipulate them on uf1 uf2 uf3 all the elements of the ring and if it is finite finitely generated you call it coherent now equivalent definition of quasi coherent which is actually makes much more sense to work with so so f is a quasi coherent ov module if for every point in v so v is the set which we have fixed after all we are talking about ov module so if every point of v there exists an open neighborhood u of p and a exact sequence of ov modules which uh, exact sequence i will just draw So instead of OX you should read O of V. So O of V J, O of V I, you end up at F. All of them are, are defined on open set U and so these are J and I are nothing but index sets. Yeah, so you're just these copies 
of O of V. Yeah, I've written O of X, but you should read it as O of V. So they're just copies. Yeah, so J and I are nothing but index it. They're, you are having direct sum of these copies. And this map here is on to from yeah, from O V I to F. This map is on to obviously that is exact sequence. So basically what we are trying to say is that F is quasi coherent. If you have an on to map from some direct sum copies to F and the kernel of this map also looks like uh, sum of direct uh, copies direct sum copies of O of E. So not only it is a on to map from the direct sum but the kernel also looks like some kind of a direct sum. So you have a index sets J and I and that is the way to think about it. So now this quasi coherent is a very local property. Yeah, so X is algebraic variety, F is a OX module and F is quasi coherent or respectively coherent. If you have an affine covering of X, yeah, F is has an affine covering by these sets UI. Yeah, so you know the affine covering I have defined multiple times. You take elements of O of X and then start defining sets such that f of ui is quasi coherent respectively coherent on each each of these sets yeah so this coherence and quasi coherence basically are local properties and uh, the best way to understand a quasi coherent module is to think of it as a direct sum of uh, copies of whatever module whatever ring we want to talk about yeah so now again you fix x as a variety f and g p2 quasi -co coherent sheaves on o of x obviously f and g are both so quasi coherent sheave is same as quasi coherent module yeah so again they have to be OX modules. Now you fix the uh, algebraic set X, F and G are quasi coherent sheaves or quasi coherent modules, quasi coherent OX modules because we have fixed the set X. So, first is the tensor product, you see, you define it on every open set like this, and this implies that F tensor with G is also quasi coherent. Again, quasi coherence is a local property. And you can think of it as you know tensor product splitting over the direct sum. Now you fix a a fine open subset of X. Say U is a a fine open subset of X. Then you have F tensor it with G yeah, take it on an open set U again you know tensoring it and taking it an open set U is nothing but tensoring it with the localized uh, ring and basically you will get this again from the properties of the tensor product So this everything here is like very very obvious. Yeah, you can actually derive everything just on faith, and then look at the proofs in commutative algebra. In fact, properties of tensor product.